Hi everyone, it's HM1 Doll, RT here at Walter Reed. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of our common oxygen delivery systems here at Walter Reed. Um, so I'm just gonna begin with uh, the nasal cannula. We all know about the nasal cannula. Uh, typically on the, the med surge floors, uh, we attach it to a humidifier. Attach it to it, attach the, uh, the flow meter uh, uh, adapter to it, um, untwist this little knob, that's where the actual nasal cannula is going to go, and then we twist it straight to a flow meter. So with, uh, with your uh, nasal cannula, the limitations are one to six liters per minute. Um, and this bubble humidifier just adds comfort to the patient so it's not just straight dry um, air or oxygen entering their nares. Get my nasal cannula set there. Um, and then just the, uh, the cannula itself, you just want to make sure that the curvature follows the, uh, the natural uh, pathway of the nares. Um, so I'll just get it set on myself. Yep. So I'll just seat in there like that, kind of go around the ears, and then you secure under the chin. Um, and then again, you're maxed out at, at six liters per minute. So just get something, you see it bubbling there. And if it's bubbling, that's, you, you know it's working. Um, a safety measure is if there's like a kink in the system. So if there's a kink in the system, you see the, the bubbles are kind of going down a little bit. Maybe if I don't keep it there, there. okay, now it's flowing a little bit more, but you can see the bubbles went down a little bit there. Um, and that's your nasal cannula. Also too, something commonly, I've, like common mistakes I've seen with uh, the bubble humidifiers, when you're in a pinch, um, you may need to grab one of these other oxygen devices. I'm getting ready to put on a table like a non-rebreather. Don't attach the non-rebreather to the outside of a bubble humidifier or like this oxy mask, don't attach it directly to the humidifier. Turn off the flow meter, remove the humidifier, and then attach your device then. Okay. So that's the nasal cannula. Okay, so moving along. Um, another oxygen delivery we have is like what we call our, our aerosol therapies. Um, what we do is we have like this bottle with this, uh, this jet nebulizer here. Um, and it has like this blue dowel on it and there's some, some ports inside. And what that does is allows for uh, the, the flow meter to kind of create like a, this, this, this jet velocity to pull in room air and allow for more uh, uh, liters per minute of flow to reach the patient. Um, so the thing to remember here, and now here I'll get the bottle set up. So you kind of undo the bottle and then you uh, insert your jet nib. What's that now? And it's going to go to the outside of the flow meter. But the thing, before I attach it on flow meter, the thing to remember is that what you think you're delivering off the flow meter is not what you're actually delivering. You have to adjust the port to one of these increments. So if I'm at, if I twist it to like 30% FiO2 on this blue dial here, then I have to turn the flow meter to eight liters per minute to know that I'm achieving 30% FiO2. And how would I know this if I can't remember that? There's actually a little a diagram chart on the bottle itself to tell you what the flow meter should be set at and where this blue adapter should be twisted to to know what type of, or what uh, fraction of inspired oxygen you're trying to deliver. So I'm just going to get that set there because I have a couple kind of face masks I'm going to go through. So I'm going to twist this knob to 30%. I'm going to turn it to 8 so while it's going, I have some corrugated tubing here. Um, and this corrugated tubing, as you can see, I already kind of like pre-cut it. I pre-cut it and added like a water trap here, and I actually take it apart. I pre-cut pre the corrugated tubing, but we pretty much take like 12 to 15 pieces of corrugated tubing. We cut it in half and we put this water trap at the bottom of it because this corrugated tubing is just cold plastic. So as the aerosol is traveling through, it's going to create some rain out. And then this water trap is kind of nice because it has like a little zip tie here and you can kind of zip tie that to the side of the patient's bed so it's not moving around and it's fitting a little bit more tightly. Okay. So at this point here, um, with, it, with the aerosol and the, and the oxygen just coming out, we call this system kind of blow-by. 
So if the patient, I mean, I wouldn't use this in like an, an, an emergent situation where the, the patient is desaturated and you need some high concentrations of oxygen, but if they're agitating and you wanna you know, blow some oxygen by, you have this capability at this point. Uh, some common masks, you have the, the, the aerosol mask, and it'll, you could put your corrugated tube in there, and that can go over the patient right there. Uh, another mask, if the patient is feeling claustrophobic, or um, we have this thing called a face tent, where I'll just put it on so you guys can see. See what it looks like on a patient, but if you put it on your chin, and kind of at the crown of the head, and if they're feeling like a little claustrophobic or something like that, they may feel a little bit more comfortable with this device just for compliance. You want the patients to be compliant. We also have some like trait collars that you can put. Trait collar can go right there as well. So that's your aerosol therapies there. Turn that off for now. Actually, it's just been moving. Okay, moving along. Um, so this, this next mask... Is what you know you you see in like most emergency situations, emergency medical technicians, paramedics. Um, in the emergency department, what you'll see is the non-rebreather. Um, and the purpose of the non-rebreather is is exactly what it sounds like. It's so that the patient's not rebreathing any carbon dioxide. And, and the way it works is there's a one-way valve there, and as the patient is exhaling, they're blowing through these ports on the mask, and as they're inhaling, this inlet opens and allows them to draw from 100 or I want to say 100 percent, but um, the, um, the fraction of inspired oxygen you're trying to achieve from this bag. So uh, when you're doing this, sorry, I need to grab this nipple. Cut that out. Nothing on the Okay. So when you're getting ready to place this mask on a patient and you attach it, um, we're going to turn it to 15 liters. And you think that's 100%, but it's truly not 100%. It's truly not 100% um, because you can't you can't account for uh, the excuse me you can't account for the patient's respiratory rate and tidal volumes that they're drawing to ensure that it's 100% oxygen. So unless you have a, uh, unless you have an endotracheal tube or a tight fitted mask like a CPAP mask or BiPAP mask, um, so it's about roughly 80%. As you can see, the back's kind of filling there. Um, but what some people do is kind of put their hand on the inlet the inlet valve to kind of fill it up a little quicker. Um, uh, but the purpose is when the patient is inhaling, they're drawing directly from this, this bag of oxygen. That's the beauty of this mask. Um, and so I'm gonna take it a, a step further or something that us in respiratory therapy love to go to uh, for its ability to comply with the patient. Uh, but what we have is what we call the, uh, it's called an, an oxy mask. And the beauties of the oxy mask is that it can give you, it can safely deliver oxygen at as, as low as one liter per minute and all the way up to 15 liters per minute. And the, the way that it does that is because it has all these large orifices or large holes in the mask um, and it allows for the patient, they can either like take a sip, of, uh, they can drink something, um, they can talk, communicate a little bit better. Uh, if there's an emergency situation, you can have access with suctioning. Um, and then in, in the inside of the mask, it has like this pin with this kind of like bevel shaped orifice. And what that's doing is that's allowing for the oxygen to go directly to their nair and mouth. So you are achieving the, uh, the uh, targeted amount of oxygen that you're, you want to deliver. Um, we love this thing in the respiratory therapy department. All right, so those are, my, those are our, our oxygen delivery. And then finally, I'm just gonna cover the, uh, the Ambu bag. So with the Ambu bag, this, what, what we call this device, this particular resuscita or resuscitator device is a self-inflating bag. Um, again, you have some oxygen tubing that you can uh, you know, attach to your flow meter. Um, and it has a bag there too, so that way when you're bagging your patient, you're delivering fresh, a fresh gas of oxygen directly from that bag. Um, and we have what we call a self-inflating bag, like as I'm depressing on this, it's filling up. Um, some other additional features as well. Is, is this peak this peak valve or, or uh, peak resistor or resistor valve? But essentially, um, when the patient is exhaling, we are applying some positive and expiratory pressure to the patient, uh, and it has some increments on it that can go as far as up to 20 uh, 20 centimeters water pressure. And then to continue on, so in the age of the coronavirus, we want to make sure we uh, are protecting ourselves. You can also add a bacterial viral cytofilter in line as well between the back 
in the interface that you're delivering your um, your breath to or your um, your resuscitation to. 